What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Laya and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to tie my favorite carp fishing fly. Now I have had many requests to do this video so I finally caved and I'm going to be showing you guys the base pattern for this fly and you guys can take this and put your own personal twists on it depending on where you're fishing and what these fish are feeding on. All right, so first off, we're gonna have to go over the materials here. Now, a lot of these materials can be substituted for uh, whatever, really. So whatever you have lying around that kind of looks like these will most likely work. First things first, we got our hooks. I personally use Mustad Nymph Sprout hooks in size six. I found that these are very durable and they do not bend out when fighting a big carp. Next, we have some body material here. This is just some black uh, cross-cut rabbit strips. Uh, again, you can substitute this for pretty much anything Marabou works as well. Next up, whoa. Next up, we got some weights here. Uh, I use this little bead chain. You can also use barbells, but uh, I personally like these because they come with a lot more than a pack of barbells does. Next, we have some uh, ice dub UV black. You can also substitute this for pretty much any dubbing doesn't really matter, it doesn't actually show up on the fly. You're also gonna need some kind of leg material. I personally use this uh, Life Flex uh, leg and body material in black. And last but not least, you're gonna need some squirmy wormy or really any kind of silicone cord. You can also use pretty much any bright color and it will most likely work. Um, I've also found that these little silly legs work really well, so teach their own. All right, so now that we've gone over the materials, we're gonna jump into the actual tying of this fly. All right, so I start this off like I would any other fly, get a couple wraps around it. Um, I like to cover the full hook shank. All right, next I'm gonna grab some of this dubbing and I'm just gonna cover this whole hook shank with it. Um, and I'm doing this just so that when we tie on that squirmy material, it doesn't slip around and be all annoying on us. Boom, doesn't have to be perfect. Again, you're not actually even gonna be able to see this. You just want something that the squirmy wormy is gonna be able to grip onto so it's not sliding all over the hook shank and getting all annoying. All right, next up, grab some of your squirmy wormy material. I like to grab a good, like, mm, I would say like five inches of this just to tie it on. And I wanna have about one to three inches hanging off on the end. Uh, it really depends on where you're fishing and how you're fishing. I like to have a little bit of extra um, material so that when this fly is sitting on the ground, uh, this is gonna be sitting upright in the water column and just kind of moving around and undulating in the current. And I'm gonna tie this on, I'd say a good two and a half inches uh, for this fly. And I'm just gonna get it secured and I want it to just stick out straight from the back of the bend of the hook shank. So right about there seems good. I'm just gonna give it a couple extra wraps to get it secured. All right, so next I'm gonna take two little niblets off that eye chain, and I'm gonna do a couple wraps to tie it in here. Now you can mess around with uh, wrapping this with wire or stuff like that if you're fishing deeper water, but I personally fish pretty small creeks for carp, so I do not need a lot of weight. And I find that the less weight you use, um, obviously the less impact it's gonna make on the water. So these lighter flies usually will do better at not spooking fish. Okay, so now that I've got a couple wraps on here, we should be good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my thread to the back of this fly and we're gonna put on some of these legs. So personally, I just like to put on two or three of these legs. Um, I don't like going overboard with them because they start to kind of stick together and I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of it. So I usually put three on um, or two if I'm feeling extra finessey. So now that we've gotten these on, we're gonna go ahead and add the body. Now, some people will wrap this rabbit strip around it, but that makes it a little too buoyant in my opinion. So I like to just cut off a little bit, bit of it. And you really don't need too much of this material on here to uh, give it a good silhouette. And then before I finish this fly, I like to put uh, a couple little tufts of this hair on the underbelly. Um, so it just covers that point of the hook a little bit and makes it a little bit more discreet. All 
All right, well, now that you've gotten a little bit of body to it, I like to finish it off with a little bit of this shiny UV um, ice dub, and I'll just wrap it around the uh, neck of the fly and make a nice little collar, and I will also put it around the eyes of the fly just because I like how it looks. Alright, and I'm just going to give it a couple more wraps to get it cinched down, and then we're going to finish this off with a couple of whip finish knots. Alrighty, and there you have it. It is a super simple pattern to tie, and it is super effective for carp and even smallmouth and other things like that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, you guys can put your own twists on this, and I'm sure it'll work, but this is just kind of the base variation of it and what I've found to work in my local bodies of water. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one.